welcome. I was asked recently to do a, a, a presentation on the Tarbell course. I love the Tarbell course. I've probably mentioned it a number of times. I've probably referenced it in other videos. But this particular gentleman asked me to do a complete video on just Tarbell, give the history and so on. So that's what I'm going to do. Tarbell, arguably the most significant contribution to magic, in, in my opinion, ever. Ever. I mean, there are, there are other books that, uh, that have made an impact. There are other performers that have made an impact. There are inventors that have made an impact. But look at this. Look at this. Eight volumes, right? Eight volumes. And every volume is chock full of great magic. Back in, back in the day, when, when I used to hang out with Denny, and, and uh, De Denny used to say, It's in Torbell. You'd ask Denny, <laughs> you'd ask Denny about a trick, right? About, about a methodology or about an effect. And he would, his, his almost every time his answer was, it's in Tarbell. And, and the fact is, almost everything is in Tarbell. There, I can't tell you how many magicians, including Fu Manchu and a number of others, have built their careers on this book, on this series of books. Anything you want to know, mentalism, kids show, stage, close-up, it's in Tarbell. Everything's in Tarbell. Now, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this. I'm a sucker for a slick ad campaign. You know, I watch the Penguin ads a lot or the Alakazam. I watch Alakazam's uh, regular show, by the way. They do like an hour show. And they present new product. And Alakazam is really great at, at coming up with new material. And Penguin is terrific for their lectures. And so I, I follow a lot of other dealers and so on. But it's not uncommon. I'm not saying it happens all the time. But it's not uncommon for me to go out and purchase a brand new effect. The hype is amazing. I buy this new effect. I get it home. I think, you know, this looks familiar. And sure enough, it's in Tarbell. Everything's in Tarbell. Now, now, I will say this about some of the new stuff, uh, and, and I do this myself. You know, you take an idea, you take an idea that's in Tarbell, and you develop it, and you change it, and then it becomes your own, and it becomes something unique. There's nothing wrong with marketing that, right? I mean, it really is yours, because you took the idea, and you fashioned it, and you honed it, and you added things to it. But, but sometimes you can see that, you can see that it came from Tarbell. Uh, and that, that's the thing about Tarbell. You should, I, I don't go to Tarbell and pull out stuff from the books and do it verbatim. You know, I mean, I mean, Harlan Tarbell gives you the script. He gives you the methodology. He gives you everything you need to do the effect. That's wonderful. I, I generally won't pull something out of Tarbell and do it as it's presented in the book. I'll change the methodology to suit my occasion. I will change certainly change the scripting so that I'm I'm presenting something that is that is according to my brand, according to what makes sense for me. So things get changed and they get modified, and some performers go ahead and market that, and that's fine. The point though is you'd be hard pressed to find anything that isn't in some way, shape, or form reference in Tarbell. Another good example, when I was doing stage. One of my favorite illusions was the shadow box illusion. There's a variation of the shadow box in here. Now the thing about it is, if you did the method, if you did the, the same method that is presented in Tarbell, it's, it's not that good. You know, it's, it's not that you can do it, you can get away with it. It's not that good. It that doesn't create that much mystery. The modern shadow box, the variation of the shadow box. I'm not going to expl explain the modus operandi here. I just, I just don't do that in this in this forum. But but the newer versions of of the shadow box that really evolved out of Tarbell. You know, you th they're foolers. They really are because they're they're variations that have been made. But the roots of the shadow box. It's in Tarbell, you know, it's so much is in Tarbell. This, by the way, is Harlan Tarbell. He is the creator, the editor, the illustrator. Uh, he's the man that made this happen. Harlan Tarbell, fantastic. 
uh, the, the world of magic owes that man a tremendous deal. Listen, when I started doing magic, you know, uh, I remember Phil Thomas telling me I needed to have a tarbell. Uh, Lou Walston used to tell his people that. Denny Haney certainly told his people that. So all of the great dealers, who were more than dealers, they were mentors, advocated for this set. And it is voluminous. I mean, to start it at lesson one and go all the way through the end is going to take you a while, let's face it. Uh, and, and I'm not sure I've done, I, I mean, you, you can see where I have marked spaces because these are effects that I routinely go back to. Um, I, I, you know, over, over the course of 50 years, I've probably read through every volume, read through every trip. But, but to sit down and do it in a sitting, no, I, no, not in a sitting, it's just too, too much, too much. You, this is a reference work, it's like an encyclopedia. You go to it. You know what I mean? You go to it when you need it. It's there on your shelf when you need it. It's, it is a, a fantastic source for ideas and inspiration. inspiration. So if I haven't sold you one, I'm sorry. One thing, one other thing. As you probably know, I've become a dealer in recent days. Um, I'm, I'm selling product. I have my own website. I'm selling things off the website. But that website is hooked to my eBay store. I've been trying to get these in. Uh, D. Robbins is the publisher right now. And I've been trying to get these in just so that I can have them available for you. If you need them, I can't get them. I can't get them. They, they've been out of print. I can't get my hands on them. Uh, but I'm on a waiting list. So, so hopefully I'll get a couple of sets in. I'll have them available when I do. I'll be posting them on my website and on the eBay store. So let me give you a little bit of a history. I've actually got three pages of history here. It's, it's, it's a long history. I want to give you a little bit of history about Harlan Tarbell and also about the set. So you have a good, a good reference point for all of that work. Harlan Eugene Tarbell was born February 23rd, 1890. My favorite decade, the 1890s. He passed away June 16th, 1960, just, just days before my birthday. I mean, I was born in 1960, so, um, so you know, it, it, it fascinates me sometimes to look back at the people that I admire and reference when they, when they passed, when they, when they left this earth, and think, you know, where was I? What was I doing? Uh, I, I was just about to be born when... Uh, when Harlan uh, left, left. So 1902, <clears throat> Harlan Tarbell creates cartoons for newspapers. Get Check this out. He's 12 years old. So at some point in his childhood, he develops a fascination with art and drawing. And by the way, all the illustrations in here are done by Harlan Tarbell. So, so he develops this ability and he's working for newspapers at the age of 12. He hikes five miles to the Morton Town Hall to see the great Dante perform. Dante's name, by the way, is Harry August Jansen. Dante performs at the Town Hall 1902. So at this point, the magic bug bites. Harlan Tarbell is hooked. That's happened to a lot of us. It happens to Harlan Tarbell. 1911. Tarbell moves to Chicago to pursue a career as an illustrator. He does some work in Chicago. He gets noticed by Reed and Covert, who hire him to do the illustrations for their catalog of magic. So now he's doing magical illustrations, 1911. He continues to work for them until 1941. In 1914, World War I breaks out. He gets enlisted. He, he, uh, he goes to war. He served. During World War I, Tarbell served with the 24th Air Company in France. Working with the medical department, he illustrated a military atlas while he was at war, and he studied under the French Impressionist Claude Monet. In 1926, publishers Grant Cook and Walter Jordan developed an interest in producing a correspondence course in magic. So this is the root of Tarbell, of what became known as 
the Tarbell Course in Magic. Cook and Jordan developed this interest. They want to do a correspondence course. They approach Harry Houdini. Now bear in mind the year 1926. Houdini would pass away only weeks after they ask him. So they ask Harry Houdini if he'll, if he'll chair this course, if he'll do the course. Harry Houdini turns them down, but he references them or refers them to Harlan Tarbell. So Houdini is the one who sent the publishers to, Harry, to, to Harlan Tarbell to do what became the Tarbell Course in Magic. So Cook and Jordan hired Tarbell and Walter Baker, another Chicago area magician, to work on the project. Baker drops out. Tarbell goes it alone. The publishers allotted Tarbell $50,000. That is a chunk of change in 1926. $50,000 to do the course. Uh, each lesson was mailed as a correspondence course from 1926 until 1928. Now let me break something out for you here. Okay? That's uh, volume 1, 2, 3, volume 4 and 5. Okay, so this is volume 6, 7, and 8. These volumes right here, volume 1 through 5, these, this is the work that Harlan Tarbell produced between 1926 and 1928. Each lesson was sent out via correspondence to subscribers. This is the work right here. In 1931, after selling 10,000 courses, Cook and Jordan decide to discontinue the Tarbell course, citing hardship due to the Great Depression. So they're not involved anymore in 1931. In 1934, Harlan Tarbell directs a feature film, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century. I kid you not, look it up. He directs the film, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, and he stars in the film, as Dr. Howard. So check that out, 1934. In 1941, Louis Tannen purchased the rights to the Tarbell course. Working with Tarbell and Ralph Reed of Reed and Covert to convert the correspondence lessons into book form. So here it is, 1941. The individual lessons are converted into what you see right here, volume 1 through 5, 1941. In 1954, volume 6 was produced by Harlan Tarbell. So here we go, so many years, decades later, Tarbell does another volume. Volume 6, 1954. 1962, D. Robbins of Easy Magic purchases the rights from Tannins to publish the Tarbell course, 1962. In 1972, volume 7 is written not by Harlan Tarbell. Remember, Tarbell dies in 1960. So 1972, Harry Lorraine compiles volume 7 with the help of other magicians. It's largely appreciated for its index in the back. You have a category index. You have a title index. And you have a name index. So there are a number of different indexes in the back of volume 7. If you got volume 1 through 6 but you didn't get volume 7, you're missing out because volume 7 tells you where everything else is. All you need to do is remember the name of the creator or remember the title of the trick or even the category. And you can go to the volume 7 and find it pretty easy. So that's volume 7, folks. That's 1972. 1993, volume 8 of the series was compiled and edited by Richard Kaufman and Steve Burton. It collected Tarbell's widely scattered and previously uncollected writings on magic, which Kaufman then fashioned into something similar to the other lessons. And that, folks, is volume 8, compiled in 1993. One more major development happened in the history of Tarbell. In 2016, Penguin Magic 
Penguin Magic begins to produce every trick in the book. Dan Harlan, who I believe is this generation's Harlan Tarbell, Dan Harlan went through every lesson, put his own stamp on it, brought it up to the 21st century, and produced it for Penguin Magic. If you haven't begun to collect these, you should. I believe, I haven't checked it out recently, but I collected them. When I collected the Dan Harlan series, he was selling them for $100 for 10. Now, they'd be 15, 20 if you bought them individually, but you collect them in sets of 10, and, uh, and, and you get them that way. And, and I'll tell you something, Dan Harlan does a wonderful job. A wonder, he takes all the magic in here and he makes it totally accessible to people in the 21st century who are used to video learning. So, uh, folks, I, listen, I hope you enjoyed my, my little spiel on Tarbell. Uh, I know that you've asked for it, you've waited for it. I, by the way, I appreciate your questions. I appreciate your requests. I do my best. I, I, there was a request that was made a few weeks ago. Gentleman said, will you do something on bar bets? You know, I, I've been thinking about that. It's been in the back of my mind. <clears throat> I'd like to do something on bar bets. The thing for me is they're not they're not my natural habitat. You know, I, I don't do the three card Monty. I don't do uh, the three shell game. I don't do some of those things that that are typically associated with guys like Harry Anderson. <clears throat> but I, I appreciate your request. I appreciate uh, everything that you the, the comments. Please comment down below. I love reading those. I love interacting with you on the comments. Please subscribe. And uh, folks, by the way, I'm making my living doing this now. So um, so check out my eBay store. Check out my my dealer website. I'm also doing Zoom shows. Um, so if you have an interest in any of that, please reach out and talk to me. Um, I want to tell you that story sometime. This is not the time. This is about Tarbell. But I have a story to tell, and, and I will tell you that story. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate that you watch. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Have a great day.